Hello everyone. My name's Greg Butler and I'd like to welcome you today. Great night last night. Now the work starts. First thing I want to say is welcome. G'day. Bienvenida. Bienvenida. <laughs> it's the Australian accent. <laughs> so it's great to see you all here and um, we're very excited about being able to spend a couple of days with you to kick off the work that we're doing. And so what we're going to be doing while we're here is trying to spend some time getting you people to know each other, to ask hard questions, to start to build deeper understanding of what we're trying to achieve and how this will all work. So, one of the first things I wanted to highlight today was that we have tremendous diversity in the room. I know Michael said it last night, but we do have tremendous diversity. We have about 34 people, I think it is, at a rough count, from 13 countries, um, representing many different organisations. And in fact, for most of you, you're the tip of an iceberg somewhere. You're the tip of a larger group of schools and organisations within your systems. And so it's great to have you here. It's great to have the diversity. The other point I want to make is, and, and I think I'll steal Michael's term from last night, I think we need to all be comfortable with ambiguity because we're not going to come today and say this is exactly what's going to happen. We're going to work on that together. We're going to make decisions together. We're going to take feedback and we're going to make changes as we move along. So I want to encourage you to be very open to challenge us, to give us feedback, to tell us what we need to do. One of the things that we did to start out today is that we wanted to shift away from giving you lots of print, set, print out of information. So we've given you an agenda, but we, we've also created a, a web app that has all of the information on it from the event. And I'm going to give you the address. You can write it down here. It's pretty easy to remember. It's app.newpedagogies.net. And what will happen is when you bring that app up, it will have on it the information not only for the event, but other information as well. And as we grow and develop, we'll be putting more information on that app. And the very neat thing about it is that as you go back to your organisations, you'll be able to share that with people and they'll be able to access the information. As you can see, we are recording the sessions as well today and tomorrow. And so those recordings will also go on the app. As the PowerPoints are delivered or as we do sessions, the presentations will be put on the app. So more and more that will grow and it's not just meant for this one event it's meant to grow over time so you have a standing record of the information as we move along so i would encourage you just as a oh i have got it in my pocket here where did i put it on the back of your name tags on the back is the internet login so if you didn't see that there's an internet login there and you can get access to the wireless using that login on the back of your IDs. Again, this is meant to be a collaborative tool and we want to gather, gather artefacts from all of you and start to use that. We'll also look at the issues of putting material up in different language and translation and how we work on that as we go along. So I guess there's a recurring theme here. This is not a situation where we're going to say to you, everything is done, we're building as we go. And in fact, I wanted to start with a quote from John Quinn. I don't know if any of you have read John Quinn's work. In his book called Building the Bridges You Walk On It, A Guide to Leading Change. 
And I really like this quote because it means something to me. He says, when you commit to a vision of something that's never been done before, you have to build the bridge as you walk on it. There is no other way. And so we'll be building the bridge as we walk on it. And that may cause us all a little bit of angst at times, a little bit of anxiety. But hey, it'll be fun as well. So we're looking forward to that. I just wanted to remind you, and hopefully most of you have seen this information in the uh, materials about the, the partnership, just to remind us of our purpose. And what we're, what we're here, what we're trying to do is to create a global partnership implementing deep learning goals that are enabled by new pedagogies and accelerated by technology. And while some of the things that we're trying to do have been done before, I don't believe that they've ever been done at the scale or with the diversity before. And I think they're pretty important elements. What do we want to achieve through the work that we want to do with you? So we want to engage systems, talking about system change, in collective efforts to mobilise deep learning. That's the first one. The second one is we want to identify the deep learning that's already happening in those systems, expose it and scale it. We know that in your schools, some of your schools, there are great things happening. The trouble is they're not happening in all schools. They're not happening at a level that's meeting the needs of the young people today. All young people. We want to capture and cultivate those new pedagogies and be able to share them broadly. And we want to leverage technology to do that. And then, critically, what we want to do is also look at new measures. In other words, moving past traditional measures towards what are the new measures of this deep learning. And again, someone said to me, you know, can you tell us exactly what they are? And I said, no, not yet. But we've got good ideas and we'll spend time talking about what those good ideas are and hear from you what you think as well. As far as the way the global partnership is organised, just wanted to, to sort of give it to you as a visual. We have Michael Fullen and his team, and it's not just Michael, Michael has a, a great team around him, who are going to support the system change components. And we'll go a little bit deeper on what that means as we go along. We, have, we will have 10 countries. We don't have 10 countries here yet, but we're just in the stages of finalising who those countries will be prior to January. That was our timeline of trying to organise those countries. We have some private sector partners involved, and they've helped us get to this point with resourcing and support. We have a number of learning partners involved. Organisations like British Council are represented here, um, European Commission through the European School Net. And we have a set of global advisors who we've reached out to and asked for support in this project. And some of these people you might know. Andreas Leiker from OECD, John Hattie from the University of Melbourne, um, Deidre Butler from... Um, uh, What's the university? University in Dublin. Dublin. University of Dublin. Uh, Russ Quaglia from the US. Peter Hill, who was ex-ACARA uh, in Australia most recently and is now doing a lot of independent work around measurement. And a range of others. That's not all of them. And then at the middle, there's an organisation called Collaborative Impact that I represent that's sort of trying to make all this work together, to bring together people to align our objective to support the implementation. Well, what we wanted to do was that we wanted to try and depict this for you, because it is big and hairy to some extent. We wanted to depict this in a map, in a, in a diagram, a map, I would call it. 
So what I'd like to do is take a few minutes just to walk you through this map, which hopefully will explain how we're thinking about the organisation and how it impacts the communities, etc., that we work with. One of the, the first things I want to say is that um, we see the new pedagogies for deep learning global partnership and the work as being a living and learning organisation. So that's why you'll see on this diagram there are lots of double-headed arrows of people learning from people and sharing that learning back. And so we really want it to be seen as something or other that's evolving, that's developing over time. So let me walk you through the map. Let's start with what is the central theme here. And that is the deep learning competencies for all students. And I, I know many of you will want to know what do we mean by deep learning. And I'm going to start the discussion, but that's going to be something that goes on over the two days. So we will do activities to help us all develop a shared definition of what we mean by deep learning and deep learning competencies. So we do know, however, that it involves a range of competencies that we've included on the map so far, and we'll be working through these. And really what we want to do is focus on the competencies for young people that prepare them for success in life and work. That they can become active members of their societies, active employees or employers or working in a range of forms, being creative, dynamic, entrepreneurial, etc. One of the key things about deep learning is a theme that I think will come up as we move along, is that we're talking here about a shifting relationship between teacher and student, and student and student, that's moving more into a learning partnership. And again, we'll talk more about that as we go along. One of the things that underpins all the work that we're doing is the notion that this is really a, a global partnership. And so on our map you can see that we've included partnerships because there will be different partnerships that happen. You'll have local partnerships in your communities and your states and your countries and your systems. There's the global partnership. And the whole idea is that what we're trying to do is to create a very strong and effective multi-stakeholder partnership. The global partnership has initiated this work but the really key part of it is the 10 clusters being local partnerships that work. And that's why we'll be spending time looking at how we can support that happening. Uh, one of the things about the partnerships is that we think the different partnerships and members and stakeholders will bring different resources. It will allow us all to share the risk. And it will provide mechanisms for mutual accountability. So we will support each other to get better. And that's one of the key messages of having a partnership. We distributed a paper on partnership and we'll talk a little bit more about the partnership tomorrow in the agenda. At the, at the heart of the work are the 10 clusters. And so the idea here is that we, we're working with 100 schools in each cluster so that we can represent scale, that it really is a a system level or a large scale change that's happening. Many people said, why, why don't you do this with one or two schools? And that's already happening. The issue here is that how do we scale that up so that it becomes a system level change rather than just a, an individual school change. And really what we're trying to do with the clusters is to learn by doing and do by learning and grow and develop but rapidly over time. With the key trait of expanding new pedagogies that foster deep learning. That's the key work of the clusters. The great thing is having 10 different countries involved and highly connected means we'll all be able to learn from each other. And I think that's a very, very exciting part of the work is learning from each other. Linked to this is the sense that <coughs> 
The schools don't operate by themselves. They operate in the context of their communities, their societies, their countries, etc. And so, again, we want to build mechanisms that the learning just doesn't happen in the schools and that the partnerships are part of the community effort. <clears throat> One of my, I guess, concerns about change in education, and I, I, I'm not going to go through my bio, it's on the, on the app, but um, one of the things I would say, I guess, is that quite often change gets killed by the community or by the outside stakeholders more than the inside stakeholders. So we want to make sure that we have strong connections to the community, to the systems, the systems are learning from the work, etc. And I think the most important part of the work is that this is all underpinned by capacity building. And we're looking at capacity building in four areas. The first area is in partnerships. How can we help you develop more skills? That's why after this first two days, we're running another workshop on partnership capacity building. And we'll run that same workshop again in London. And if we need to run it again, we'll keep running it till everyone feels comfortable in that domain. We'll also support you in partnership skills moving forward with tools, new measures of partnership, tools to help you guide your work. The second area of capacity building is, cha is change leadership. So here we're looking at whole system change and pedagogical leadership. How can we enable those and build capacity around those through the work? The third is pedagogical practices. What happens in classrooms, with teachers and students and the, and the learning relationships that happen there. And then the last is around the new measures. So what are these learning measures in the domains of learning practices, learning conditions and learning outcomes? So you will have a copy of this map. It's on the app and we can distribute it and hopefully it might provide a useful way for you to explain what's happening, the work. The 10 countries, as I mentioned, so far this is, might be how it stands. Um, as I said, there are some countries who wanted to be here and couldn't be here, both for technical reasons and the fact that they hadn't progressed enough. There are some countries we're still talking to, but we will have wide diversity. And I think one of the things that I'm very, most excited about is the fact that this is not just a, a one, you know, one part of the world or uh, the developed world or the, or the developing world or whatever. It's quite diverse, north, south, east, west. And I think that diversity will provide huge opportunities for learning as we go along. So the meeting over the next two days, what do we hope to achieve? What do we want you to go away with? And please, we do want to hear from you how we're going, so don't, don't be backward, come forward and tell us if you think things need to be changed or improved or adjusted, because one of the things we will do is make changes as we move along. We want to develop shared understanding of the new pedagogies for deep learning. As I said, I'm sure many of you are asking that question now. We want strategies to establish and support the cluster startup phase. So as you build your cluster, as you select your schools, as you put people in place, as you put mechanisms to communicate, the support mechanisms, etc., we want to help you with that strategy as we move along, or strategies. And we want to, importantly, and we'll be doing this throughout the day and this tonight when we have a very, very fun activity, um, we want to start to build the cohesion between the countries and the people who are here. So we're going to intentionally try and break you up some because we want you to meet other people, we want you to work with other people, etc. as we go along. Just how we will be supporting the clusters as we go along looks a little bit like this. I think the key thing, as I said already, is the students in the 10 clusters, the 10 countries. Really, the work is focused around how we can develop deep learning competencies in those young people. There'll be 10 clusters around, as I mentioned, and there'll be three T 
teams supporting the work. Three teams that link the global with the local, that link the local with the local. And those teams are our leadership change teams, the capacity building teams, and the new measure change teams. And just so we can put names to these and faces to these, on the leadership change teams, it'll be Michael Fullen and Joanne Quinn who are leading, and you'll hear from them as we go along. On the, cap the capacity building change teams, it'll be myself and Joanne McEachin. Again, you'll hear from us as we go along. And on the new measures change teams, it'll be Maria Langworthy. They're just part of the teams. There'll be more people you'll meet as we go along. We also have a global partnership governance model. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we go along during the sessions. And we have these external advisories. And it's been quite phenomenal to see who's been willing to step up and ad start to advise us and support the work. International experts in the field. And we've already started the calls and the meetings with those people. And it's really exciting to think of the connections that are being made. Now, what's going to happen over the next two days? As I said, there's a bit of an agenda on your table. I'll walk you through. The key thing I want to highlight, though, is today the major focus is on building understanding. And in building understanding, we want to both challenge you, but also get you to tell us and ask us questions and make us go deeper, and we'll try and make you go deeper on the understanding. We're going to do that with, start off with connecting our global community. We're going to have a keynote from Michael about the global partnership. We're going to do activities around building clarity for new pedagogies for deep learning. In the afternoon, we'll look at mobilisation how we're going to make it happen together. And then reflections and world changing insights. What's happening? How does this all fit together? And then tonight we'll have a team building dinner. And as I said, I'm not going to let slip too much on that, but it is going to be fun. Tomorrow, the major theme is moving to action. Moving to action. So we'll be reconnecting, we're going to do a session on partnership building as I mentioned earlier. We're going to do a session on building whole system capacity. There'll be cluster team working groups where you get to get in your cluster group and work deeper about your first steps and your strategies. And then we'll do some inter-cluster sharing and along with a, a virtual keynote from Andrea Sleiker tomorrow afternoon is going to come in from Paris and talk to us a little bit about his views of new pedagogies and what's happening on the global front from his view. And then we'll fi finalise it with moving to action and, a, and closing ceremonies. I just want to leave you with this quote that I took from the partnership paper that we distributed and hopefully you've had a chance to read. And I think it sort of sets up today. And I will read it. It says, because of the seriousness of the challenge, and the need to move to action quickly. Cluster leadership teams are being asked to come to the Hong Kong workshop with an open mind, ready to challenge their own assumptions and orthodoxies and to focus on developing truly innovative approach to address the new pedagogies for deep learning challenges. So my challenge to you at the start of the first day is, I often say it's good to have that that inner person sit on your shoulder and say, is that an assumption that I can challenge? What's the orthodoxy driving my thinking? How can I push myself to think in new and different ways? Because that's one of going to be one of the critical parts of the workshop. I want to finish again with this saying that this is all about bringing together people from different countries who speak different languages, who have different systems, who have different approaches, and learning together. And I'm incredibly excited about the opportunities to learn together. So, thank you very much. And I'm going to hand over to Joanne Quinn, who's going to start the work in connecting our global community. Thanks, Joanne.